So we're here at LEAF 2013. So who are you? <laughs> Hi, my name is Massimo Banzi and between other things I'm the founder, one of the founders of the Arduino project, which is an open source hardware platform to develop with microcontrollers. So when did it start? What date? Ooh, uh, well, Arduino dates back to when I started teaching in a design school and I needed to explain to my students how to use microcontrollers. So it started in 2002 and then we did a lot of experiments and we came to Arduino at the end of 2004. The name we invented it at the beginning of 2005. 2005 the name came out and then uh, it's Italian. Fun, fun. You're an Italian guy, right? <laughs> yes, I was born in Italy. I, I, yeah, I'm Italian. The idea, we were uh, teaching in a design school in Ivrea, which is in the northwest of Italy. So we chose an Italian name because we needed a name and we didn't have enough time. So we said, so let's find something. And we decided to call it like the bar where we used to go and get drinks. So and it, the name worked and we kept it. So how big is Arduino today? <laughs> well, there's about uh, 1, 1. 1.2 million, roughly, Arduino boards that have been sort of, let's call them official. So they were made by a manufacturer that licensed the Arduino name properly. And I'm sure that there's probably at least 1 million of Chinese clones, copies of different kind. And there's also a very good number of derivatives because Arduino is open source so people can take our design and make their own design. So you encourage that people take your open source hardware and make their own but just they, they should not call it Arduino right? Yeah I mean they shouldn't use the name and the logo and they shouldn't in a way uh, tell people that they are original you know, but they can say you know this was derived from Arduino yeah totally. So how many versions have you had? Mm, you know that I don't know the exact number there's probably about eight or nine official Arduino, call them main boards, because there's one with a small processor, a bigger processor. We just launched a new line of Arduino boards. They use a Cortex-M3 ARM processor, which for us it's a big It's step. a big leap? It's a big leap, yeah. Going from an 8-bit microcontroller running on very tiny RAM, moving to uh, 100, almost 100 megahertz, a lot of power. It's an interesting jump for us. So... And also there's like boards with Ethernet connection, uh, with the wireless connection, so the family is big. Uh, there has been version 1, version 2, version 3, or not really? Well, yeah, we had the basic the basics, uh, design, is it's a small board, the size of a credit card more or less that we developed for years, and now we call that the UNO line, which means one in one. Italian and, and in Spanish. And then... The ARM version we call it DUE because for us that's a rather family of products which is you know based on the original Arduino but it has so much more potential that it needs to develop uh, separately. So what was the name of the chip before? 8-bit? What is that? So we use this processor from this uh, from made by Atmel called AVR. AVR is very nice because it's a very simple uh, RISC architecture that it's um, very powerful but also simple enough to learn and has a very good open source GCC compiler. So it was possible to build Arduino because there was a very good C++ compiler and so we didn't, we had to make a mashup of open source technology but the important stuff was there and that's important when you create something like this. So can you explain again what happens now with ARM? When did that release arrive? Do it. So we <clears throat> officially sort of released the, the DUE at the end of 2012 and um, so clearly we now go from 8-bit to 32-bit, we go from 16 megahertz of speed to 84 megahertz and there are faster processors coming as well. Then we start to have, uh, you know, the, the, the analog inputs, the analog to digital converters are incredibly faster so in a way we are starting to adapt the API that Arduino has to take a full advantage of the speed and the processing power so the new board can you know, decode uh, OG files and play them back, which the original one couldn't even, it could do like wave files but 8-bit and <laughs> so obviously the, the possibilities are a lot more. So you say analog inputs are now more, much more possible, you would oh, yeah. say, and that's 
for example, audio? What other, other kinds of things could it be? Well, for example, the new board is able to sample audio signals, things that the previous board couldn't do. And then it also has a digital to analog converter, so you can actually uh, grab uh, audio data, you can process it on the processor, so you can do DSP, digital signal processing, and you can output it at sound on the DAC. So you can create audio application that don't require an operating system, but run very fast on, a, on the silicon itself. Uh, and so this is a, a big opportunity for the people who are doing, for example, sound on the old Arduino, and obviously there were the limits of an 8-bit microcontroller running at very slow speed. So the sound, what other kinds of things can you, can you... Yeah, I mean, the question is this. Since you have a much more powerful processor that runs at 32-bit, for example, if you're making a 3D printer, then suddenly the precision of movement that you get is much higher. So you can go, you can go at smaller resolutions, you can print at much higher level of detail, and you can do it faster uh, because you have a lot more computing power. Or if you're making a quadcopter, a lot of people make quadcopter based on Arduino, suddenly you can make your calculation a lot faster, you have much higher precision, so you can do more complex navigation. So this is the kind of stuff that having a much better processor enables you to do. So the quadcopters is totally awesome. There's Arduino in, in most of them? Like the small ones? In not, not, in, not, not in all of them, but uh, for example... The totally small one is Arduino? There's also like... This size? This size. So they are... Um, there's a project called ArduPilot, and they make the main board for airplanes and helicopters. So everything that's derived from uh, ArduPilot or ArduCopter, it's based on the technology behind Arduino. And they are mostly 8-bits for now. So now, for now they are 8-bits and there are also people who are migrating that to 32-bit. So while you do this, you can, for example, get image recognition, I guess? For example, with the new processor, you could do some basic image recognition because it's a reasonably fast processor. With the original Arduino, it was a problem to process all those sensor data. No email. Now you have more sensors as well. Is it like all the... Do you already had these sensors before? Or how's, what's it different no, 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 now the, with the, the sensors? The question is that you know, these quadcopters are based on acquiring a lot of sensor data like accelerometers and gyroscopes and all sorts of other sensors. They have to acquire them really fast, process the data and decide this is where I want to go and this is what's happening to my helicopter. How do I change the speed of the motor to go where I need to go? And obviously that has performance limitations. So with the new board, you can imagine to do more precise movement, go faster, maneuver in more difficult situations and that kind of stuff. So uh, how much is a new board? The new board is about $49 to the end user in quantity one. It's uh, obviously the cost of the hardware also includes the fact that there's the whole development environment that gets uh, developed and the documentation and you know the fact that you get a piece of hardware that you plug into your computer and in 20 minutes you're developing you're developing projects. And I think that's very important of Arduino, the fact that we always make platforms where you plug a cable and in 15 minutes, 20 minutes, you're working. So 2005, 2006, and you talk about 1.2, 1.5, or maybe 2 million people involved. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a big, is it the biggest consumer, uh, what you call it, the uh, hardware hacking, software hacking project in the whole world? I don't know, I don't know exactly. Uh, there's, there's also a lot of other projects that have big communities. For sure, I think it's, it has uh, brought a lot of people that never thought about programming microcontrollers into the microcontroller world. So this is, for example, what a number of uh, you know, people, they told me that they never thought they were gonna do electronics or microcontrollers, but then they could do it and they started to use it as a tool, as a creative tool. So there are projects that mobile have more uh, users, but they are people who already know about the technology. While in Arduino you get, you know, uh, kids, you get uh, people who do fashion, people who do music, that just pick it up, they start playing with it, and boom, they're making stuff. Right here, for example, there's a guy doing a printer, 
and yeah. I guess over there, are they using Arduino as well? Oh yes, yeah. so you go online and you can write a message on the website and then there's an Arduino that picks up the data from the network and then it drives the motors and, yeah. and basically draws the text on that long piece of paper. It's just one guy hacking this maybe in Switzerland? Yeah, and the, this is a the design student. Design students over there also are using oh, yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah there's... Um, there's a couple of installations inside that box uh, using yeah. Arduino to read some sensor data. And uh, there's one guy that made a box which is kind of like a calculator, but it doesn't have keys, you just knock on it. Yeah. So you knock the numbers. It says an Arduino in there. It says an Arduino in there. Nice. So there's uh, also that 3D printer over there, the Ultimaker. Yeah. It's a product that gets sold uh, on the market and it's a very good company. And they are using Arduino boards as the motherboard to run the 3D printer. So now it's ARM Cortex M3. Who's making this chip? Can you the say? The one I'm use, they're using now, it's Atmel. Atmel Cortex M3? Yeah, it's called SAM3X. And uh, is it, does it enable a whole bunch of new accessories, maybe? Well, for example, uh, the early design for our Arduino Duo was used by Google to design what they call the ADK 2012, so the Accessory Development Kit. So for the lucky people that were at Google I.O. and they got this sort of alarm clock that connects to the Android phones, what's inside? It's the early design of the Arduino Duo. And there was a big loud noise in the, in the public when they announced it and people say, yeah, they saw the Arduino and the people were happy about that. And Google announced it, Google I.O. a year and a half ago or something like that. But uh, well, they still need to like, uh, kind of like get to the next level and launch it more or something. I think, I mean, I, I actually sort of gave this feedback to Google that uh, they have great technology. The engineers in the Android team that worked on this, amazing engineers, like crazy people. So they have good people, good technology. It's open source. And still, there are, we don't see accessories for Android phones and tablets, while you know, the iPhone stuff is all proprietary, NDA, licenses, everything, and there's boom, lots of that. So, <laughs> clearly I think that if somebody from Google is listening to this, <laughs> please, think about it, because you have a great technology that you're not developing, you're not really promoting, and people could be doing so much stuff. You know, in education, you could connect the tablet to sensors, you could do scientific experiments using the tablet, as an educational tool, so the possibilities are really, really a lot, and they're basically... They're in standby, kind of, or something? No, normally what they do, they develop the technology, they mm -hmm. open source it at Google I.O., they did this also in 2011, uh, and then after that they sort of leave it to the community, which is kind of a pity, because this technology requires always a bit of a push to get people to use it. You know, when, yeah. when you push a little bit and you get people involved, that they create amazing projects. It's going to be huge. <laughs> no matter what, it's going to happen, right? I mean, Android is like everywhere. and We need yeah. accessories. We need to connect all kinds of crazy things but on there. But also connecting the phone to the real world. You know, if you combine that with Arduino, you can really you know, use the phone maybe to drive the helicopter. You know, nice. this kind of stuff. And at uh, the moment, uh, in a way, I think uh, with a little bit more help from Google, this technology could become something that uh, really kicks off the creativity of people. How, how do you describe Arduino's role in the Internet of Things that's coming up? Well, I think that uh, obviously there's lots of platforms that are being developed to do this sort of Internet of Things. I think, as usual, what happens is that a lot of these technologies are really good, really powerful, but the barrier to entry, so the amount of effort that a human being has to do in order to understand this, it's very high. So what Arduino tries to do always is to create something that you buy, you plug it in, and you know, in 15 minutes you're doing Internet of Things. So we have Wi-Fi modules, we have, we have a GSM module that comes out next Monday, hopefully, that we developed uh, together with Telefonica. So the R&D department of Telefonica, together we develop this module that you put on top of the Arduino, and the Arduino can connect to the internet from anywhere there is a GSM signal. And they developed a SIM card specifically for that module. And nice. so there, you know, there's that module, for example, will allow people to develop Internet of Things devices that you can just place anywhere. There's a nice. GSM signal, and, but you will be able to do it in 15 minutes. 
Nice. How about Bluetooth, Wi-Fi? Is that built in? We uh, we have Wi-Fi. We have Bluetooth Arduinos. We have a Wi-Fi module for Arduino. But at the moment, I think it's a bit too expensive. We're working at making something which is much cheaper. Uh, so, but in a way, we do have the tools that you can acquire. And again, 15 minutes, boom, you're working. And that's, I think, the difference between a lot of the very complex toolkits that you can buy on the market. But then it takes you a week to figure out where to download the software, the licenses, and yes. Nice, but uh, there's also maybe the next level of uh, all kinds of projects kind of showing that it's possible to make a huge amount of money also, <laughs> yeah. I guess, because that can help, I guess. Yeah, if somebody wants to make a lot of money, they can. <laughs> they can start projects and start making money. There, there's people who have developed prototypes of their projects with Arduino and then they use the underlying technology of Arduino to develop their own circuit and they were able to sell a lot of products. Like the bot, the MakerBot? Yeah, the MakerBot originally started off with Arduino, the Ultimaker, they still use Arduino, they don't make <laughs> billions of dollars but they are a very good healthy market that, with a lot of innovation happening. And the Chamber of Commerce are wrong, so you guys there are still examples of people who think, you know, to the future. Right. So the, from the 3rd to the 6th of October, in Rome, we're going to be organizing this European Maker Fair, where we're going to gather the best representatives of the maker movement to come down and work together, get to know each other, create bridges. And so, you know, spread the word, and thank you for it. <laughs>